All right, so we do have people ready to to listen to a bunch of um, amazing uh, information and stories, right? That's what I do. Yeah, if you guys are in the chat, let us know where you're from so we can see where everyone's tuning in from today. Oh yeah, okay. Um, well, we're all local uh, in Los Angeles. Um, in fact, uh, the word local is used figuratively and specifically because we are part of a, a, a union local or members of. And uh, wow, look at all this, Nashville, Brazil, Connecticut. Um, we have at least one uh, participant in our, ch our chat who's uh, in London right now. So um, I, we, we need to finish this before it's for bedtime. Um, maybe I will just go ahead and, and start the introduction. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to a discussion uh, about the craft of storyboarding as represented in a new book called uh, Storyboards, The Unseen Art of Hollywood. Uh, we have the uh, author or co-author of the book, uh, Trevor Goring here today, but we're gonna make all the introductions very soon. Uh, but uh, I'd like to point out that all the artists um, that are gonna be participating in the panel tonight are also in the book. And uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of artwork from uh, what they have done in the book. Um, so also thank you to Lightbox Expo for the stage and our ability, our, our honor to uh, present all this to you from so many different places. Plymouth, UK, Spain, and Michigan. Oh my gosh, all the exotic places. Um, I'd also like to thank our sponsor, uh, the Art Directors Guild. And it's uh, funny to put it like that because everyone on this panel is a member of the Art Directors Guild or the ADG as we like to call it. Uh, uh, we are also part of the illustrators and map artists uh, craft. We're uh, one of several that are also part of the Art Directors Guild and the Art Directors Guild is the local, local 800 um, of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. So I haven't figured it out yet. We're talking about a union, okay? Um, so uh, we're being uh, represented by them and it sounds very big. Sounds like a lot of, lot of groups within groups within groups like a, a Russian nesting doll. Um, but it's very personal because it has to do with us as individuals, as individual artists and what uh, this representation does for us. Uh, our our uh, wages, uh, our fair wages are protected. Uh, we uh, can expect a safe working environment. We have uh, uh, health care and pensions that come along with it. Um, you know, the, the whole thing about the unions is uh, the weekend would not even exist if it weren't for unions. So the fact that if they want us to work on the weekend, they have to pay us time and a half or, or, or double time. Uh, and therefore they actually, their skin flints as they are, they don't do that. They let us work on a on Monday through Friday. Um, so uh, all of that is, is part of uh, being part of uh, a union and, and in our case, the art director's guild. So if you uh, have any questions along those lines, um, our representative, Ron, is uh, he's putting in the chat room uh, uh, links to get a hold of him and uh, you know, ask any specific questions. But we're, we're gonna be talking basically about storyboarding and the history of storyboarding and you know, all the crazy little things that, that we do or are expected to do. Uh, so um, just to get us started, I'm going to share my screen and uh, you're going to get a, a little look at uh, some pieces of artwork submitted by our, our panelists for the book, uh, Storyboards, Unseen, uh, The Unseen Art of Hollywood. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. 
Um, Real quick, if my, I may, Ron, too, I just want to make everyone, hi, I'm Allison um, with Concept Art Association. Just want to give you a few heads up. We are recording this and we will be posting it later to YouTube. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A for us so we can find those easier for the last 15 minutes of our panel. We'll be more than happy to answer them for you there. Um, and that's that's about it. That's all I got for now. So thanks. We'll head to the screen share. Okay. Well, uh, you know what? Once I did that, you know what happened? Somehow Zoom, the Zoom thing just absolutely uh, disappeared from my, my, <laughs> my desktop. Hey gang, it's, uh, it's a brand new world. Um, here we go. I'm gonna go screen share now. There we go. I actually get to see that now. And I'm gonna make it a little bit more presentable for you guys. There we go. And here's the cover of the book. Nice. Uh, Warren's uh, artwork. Now I, I did crop some things so that we can emphasize the artwork. Um, there's some wonderful written material uh, by the different artists and by uh, Trevor, and he's going to talk to you about that. But just an example of all the all the goodies you're gonna go you're gonna see. Righty. And uh, Tracy, this was for the uh, the movie, The Golden Compass, and um, not the. Uh, Actually, um, the HBO program that has run recently, I think that was called uh, His Dark, Dark Materials or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So no, it's from, uh, it's from the film, Tim. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I that's think that's, that's, so that one's a little bit, that was a little bit out of, oh, sorry there. Yes, I thought I put them together in the right way. We'll uh, we'll go with that. There's Benton's work. Yeah. And uh, Mighty Joe Young. This is a remake of <laughs> the um, the stop motion uh, film done by Willis O'Brien and uh, Ray Harryhausen. So it has a a pedigree. And I picked these out from it. Trevor has a lot of stuff in there, but this is a, this is a beautiful film, The Cell. If uh, anybody ever wanted to check that out in the future, um, <laughs> the art direction on that is amazing. That's the costumes and everything. Yeah, that was one of the favorite films I ever worked on, I think. You know, had, we had a great art department. Okay, so back to back to live, and um, what we were discussing earlier on was essentially, you know what? I'm going to have to wing it a little bit, and because luckily I remember what we were going to we were going to do. Uh, I would like to uh, have every um, person on the panel introduce themselves, and maybe we could start with Trevor. Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Trevor Goring. I'm uh, the co-author of The Unseen Art of Hollywood. Uh, Tim talked about the Art Directors Guild. Uh, in fact, this um, book originated with the Illustrators and Matte Painters Union uh, over 20 years ago, uh, probably 22 years now. Uh, it was the 50th anniversary of that union, and they wanted to do a book. Um, we all sent in our work and um, nothing happened. So um, I had a meeting in San Diego comic convention with uh, Dan Herman, who is the publisher of Termes Press. And he asked me if I wanted to do a book on storyboards. So uh, I asked Casey Bonet, who had got all the work together at the union and said, yeah, go ahead, use this, use this material as we've been sent in. 
So uh, the core of the book is based on that book. And it's taken 20 odd years. Um, well, I think, yeah, that's the thing, yeah, I'm really happy with the way the book came out. And, you know, it's, um, it's been a long road, but um, I think everybody will, will enjoy the book. Um, I did, I did, uh, uh, my late wife Joyce did contribute a lot to the book. Um, working with the artists, so. <clears throat> well, that's a good cue to bring in some of the artists. Um, hey, Mark, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I'm uh, Mark Vina. Uh, I've been a storyboard artist in the union for uh, 26 years now. It's hard to believe uh, it's been that long. I uh, kind of remember when uh, uh, I was one of the young Turks coming in, and now it's uh, I'm one of the old grizzled veterans. <laughs> so the time went flew by. Um, I just want to congratulate Trevor and of course Joyce. Um, I've, I've been friends with Trevor for many, many years. All just just about all those years, right, Trev? Uh, yeah. I mean, we we were in. I it, I, I can't remember. We were in the union. We got sworn in about the same time but in the mid nineties. Mid nineties, yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, we, I'm, I'm still trying to remember if it was we were in the office together when we got sworn in. If we were in the same, uh, at the same time when Marjo gave us the yeah, the, Marjo, oh yes, Marjo, I remember Mar yeah, Mar Marjo, Marjo Brene, yes, was, Marjo sworn us in, yeah, 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 yeah. She had a lot of gravitas, by the way. It's like when she had you make do the uh, the oath. Oh boy, yeah. you better mean it. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's been a fun, it's been a wonderful ride, and and uh, you know I want to just congratulate Trevor and of course Joyce because I know how much work that they put in over all these years, and it really was a dream for them, and obviously very a very passionate dream to stick with it for so long and to see this uh, come also, to fruition. I also have to mention my current wife. Sandy McDaniel. Sandy, of course. Yes. Who uh, ended up having to um, redesign the whole book. Yeah, definitely Sandy, you're right. I mean, because I yeah. know she 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 pushed it yeah. <laughs> really hard. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. right. There, there's a number of people that are that have really contributed yeah. to this and getting this to happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, awesome. it's a lot of satisfaction to see that and to see my one of my best friends. Uh, succeed like this in something that's so difficult. So congratulations, Trev. Thanks. And Andy Thanks. and Joyce. No, yeah. No. yeah. Okay. Well, how about uh, Warren? Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello there. My name is Warren Drummond. I've been in a storyboard artist in, in New York to start with from 1993 on to now when I moved out to LA in 2000. It took me uh, several years to get into the union, but once I did, it was a Whole New World. Um, I've worked on films from uh, Free Guy to Fences to A Beautiful Mind to many films by the late, great John Singleton. Um, as far as his book, thank you to Trevor, thank you Joyce, rest in peace, and to Sit Sandy for their hard work. And um, it's, a great it's a great industry to be in. Uh, it's lots of fun. It's very hard work and the, the work you have to find and um, it's a journey. So thank you everyone and let's continue. Okay, uh, Tracy, how about you? Hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm Tracy Wilson and um, I've been a storyboard artist now for I think almost, gosh, 29 years, I think. And I uh, started out in London in England, um, worked here a few years and moved out to LA in 1996. Um, I stayed and worked there for many years and then sort of relocated back to London um, sort of about 10 years ago. But I, I'm working here still on movies and TV and, and I've, yeah, I've had a, a lovely career, I've met some wonderful people and um, yeah, I'm very grateful for all the opportunities I've had. And, uh, and yeah, it's lovely to, to be asked to be in this book as well and to contribute. So. Okay, um, Benton? Uh, hi, I'm Benton Jew, and I've been a storyboard artist for 33 years, and I started out my career out of art school uh, working 
at uh, Industrial Light and Magic as a visual effects art director and storyboard artist and concept artist. And then I am actually, uh, I was on 9-11 that I moved to Los Angeles to uh, start work uh, in Los Angeles. And, um, and this is where I, this is around the time when I, 20 years ago that I joined the union and, and met many of the wonderful um, people who, who are here and including uh, Trevor and Joyce and um, and when and you know when before the changeover when we were uh, a different union uh, this was a, a pet project this book was a pet project that that had been on the back burner and with so many starts and stops that um, to see it finally come out and so beautifully done from what I've seen it's it's really an exciting thing and um you know uh thanks to trevor for and and to joyce and sandy for uh for putting this together so um so you know showing what what we can do is uh do as steward artists is, and as the title of the book says the the un the unseen art um there's so much so so much uh good artwork and so much uh you know that uh, that never gets seen, and and we I think the art story art has contributed in such a way uh, that I don't think is necessarily appreciated by the general public, and uh, and I just hope that uh, this book can help contribute to uh, a, a better uh, understanding of what we do and and uh, and how important our role is. Yeah, the, the book. The, just to emphasize that the book does go back to the 1920s and uh, cover the history of the first storyboards and has our world by Mentor Hume and Sherman Lightby and several other great artists and, and, and uh, Dorothea of course. Uh, Dorothea was the one of the first women members of the union, Dorothea Redman. Um, she, the union, the illustrators and map painters got started on Gone with the Wind which she worked on and then she worked on a lot of Hitchcock movies um, and of course, it's a not a lot of, uh, there's about five women that are represented in the book. And that's because, you know, on average, there's not an, a vast number of women working in our industry. Um, I've got articles by, uh, directors and production designers that are women. And, um, we would try to be in that respect, try and represent the industry on a, on a wide basis. Um, well, that's a that's a mental Hubner page from uh, North by Northwest. Um, so there's that there's there's over a hundred films in the book, um, broke up into different genres and, and different periods. Uh, I think it get, really gets a good overview of what storyboards are about and how they contribute to the making of the film, both creatively and practically. Uh, I think that yeah, that is emphasized in the writings from the artists and the art directors and the directors that are in this book and my little writings as well. So- um, Well, this think, little yeah. bed right here is uh, written by Joe Musso, a yeah. past yeah. president of the, yeah. the union. Yeah, Joe contributed the book um, and um, gives a bit good insight into working with Hitchcock. Um, so the other yeah, articles, are really good in explaining how artists and directors work together on films on all the various ways. Yeah. Well, uh, I would like to, you know, find a little bit, you know, going along with the whole introduction thing, some of you have actually sort of began this, but um, there's a lot of people who would like to enter the industry and uh, they come from all different, uh, you know, places and, and uh, uh, possibly even, uh, you know, like uh, animation or gaming or something like that. So maybe if you can all uh, say a little something about how you started uh, in the business and, and got to, uh, you know, where you are. Um, uh, how about uh, Tracy? Uh, you want to start? Okay. Um, I started out as an illustrator. I went to art college um, in London and I started out as an illustrator doing books and, and editorial work and advertising. Um, 
I always wanted to work in film, but I didn't really know anyone who did or used artists at the time. And, and uh, I got a book from Industrial Light and Magic and, and realized, saw Ralph Macquarie's work and realized they did use sketch artists and, and it got me interested. And uh, I got lucky, actually, I got onto a, a job in London um, on a film called Crusade as an illustrator. And I worked on that for about five months. Unfortunately, the film didn't go ahead in the end. And I got picked up from that to go and work for Raffaella De Laurentiis, a producer who basically took me under her wing and put me on various projects as a storyboard artist. I was sort of thrown in at the deep end a little and went to Slovakia and various places to work on her films and, and sort of learnt on the job, really. Um, yeah, it's just the, the best advice anyone could give me was just to listen and stay calm and collected as much as possible. And, and I learned this whole new language of blocking and, you know, sort of, you know, camera moves. And, and, and I, I pretty much learned that way. So. OK, uh, Benton, you, uh, you you started to tell us how you got started. You want to, you know, elaborate that a little more? Well, I I. I... When I was in art school, I had shown my my portfolio to uh, a guy named uh, Stan Fleming, who was a who was a storyboard artist on many things, including uh, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, and and or uh, and anyways, um, he we while I was in art school that he we had a talk and and I showed him my book and and he he we kind of hit it off because we. His work, he saw a quality that was similar to old, uh, old comic strip artists like uh, like Stan Drake and Leonard Starr. And um, my last year at art school, um, I, I got a call, and somebody and the 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 dean of the illustration department said uh, somebody from ILM wants to talk to you, and and uh, they basically. Um, Stan had given my name as somebody to who could uh, do some storyboards. So it was my last semester at the academy, and that was basically my summer job right out of basically. Oh. Uh, I, it was my last year of it was my last year of school, and my first project was a was a a, um, a simulator ride called Body Wars, and then my very first film that I worked on was uh, was Ghostbusters Two. And so I was in there, I was in there for, uh, I was worked on that and I worked on uh, The Mask, I worked on uh, The Phantom Menace, I worked on Men in Black, lots of films like that. And then uh, on 9-11, I actually moved down to Los Angeles and uh, my first union job was, uh, was uh, Terminator 3. And um, so it, um, I've been here as a union storyboardist ever since, and it's been very rewarding. Um, you know, one of the things that that I th think for a young storyboard artist who was interested in business is to talk to other storyboard artists, uh, talk to other people in the in the film industry. You know, uh, whenever you can, and and find out about the business, find out what the what the needs are, and uh, and and basically. Um, you know, do the work and, and build up a portfolio um, and and show it to anybody you can whenever you can, uh, because you never know when your, you know, your style might be the right thing for uh, for a particular project. So, Great. Uh, Warren? How to get into it? Well, um, after graduating from the School of Visual Arts in New York, I was caught of flitting around as far as I was um, I was flip buttering between comic books and wanted to be a screenwriter. And I was getting, and I had a, a part time and full time job working at Bloomingdale's. Long story short, I, two things happened. One is there was a salesperson named, named, named Oscar Nunez. So Oscar Nunez, um, who told me to join up with a group called the Black Filmmaker Foundation. And from the Black Film Foundation, which was a group of Black people in New York um, who were in the industry and wanted to get in, someone there, Rodney Stringfellow, connected me to my first feature film, which is a movie called The Drop Squad, which they needed someone, a low budget film. But that movie pro pro propelled me, me on. 
and Oscar Nunez later became Oscar from the, the show The Office, the dead Oscar. And the other person, um, I came out to LA back in to visit in uh, 1992 uh, with a friend of mine from childhood named Greg Mays, where it's at Sony. Greg got me on a short film. The samples from the short film got me the drop squad. So for everyone starting out, if you have the opportunity to work on a short film, a student film, anything, get your samples. Somehow get samples in order to get work later on. You may think it's not paying me or it's not what I want to do, but you have to have tangible art to show the people who hire you. So if you can, by all means, do shorts, student films, whatever. Even if it's a low budget movie that's not really paying you, do it, get the samples. It'll, you'll pay now, but you'll get benefits later on. Awesome. Um, how about uh, Mark? How about you? Yeah, uh, for me, uh, it was kind of a long and slow evolution. I mean, I've always been an artist uh, from my youngest years. Uh, and, you know, I went to school, I went to Long Beach State, uh, went through their, initially their art department, and got into their illustration department, but I still wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I didn't know anything about storyboards. But on a, on a particular day in one of my, during my junior year, uh, we had two guest artists come in uh, to show their work. And they were both storyboard artists. One was Dave Lowry, one was Dan Sweetman. Both are active now, wonderful illustrators. And uh, I remember leaving that meeting going, uh, wow, that's kind of an interesting field. So um, what I did is my senior year in uh, my illustration, I went ahead and, and uh, focused in on storyboarding just to see what would happen. And the summer that I graduated uh, with my degree in illustration, uh, I sent packets of my artwork out to um, various uh, representatives. Uh, uh, and there's several companies in LA that do represent storyboard artists. Uh, they're kind of a they're 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 a plus and minus uh, with with those uh, reps, but um, I did get a call back uh, from one of them, and they started representing me and sending my work out because I didn't I was completely from the outside of you know the of the field, and this is probably in my early 30s, so I was one of the late kind of the late bloomers in you know for film and storyboards. So uh, anyway, they started sending me out on jobs and it just kind of uh, you know, snowballed from there. People I worked with uh, liked the work I was doing, I was putting out, I got on to a couple of films. And of course it's, it's a, the industry is all about networking and doing good work. If you do, uh, if you do nice work, if you do a good job, they will hire, they'll hire you back on their next film or they'll recommend you for, uh, for another film and that's kind of how it builds and you know the next thing you know you have a 26 or 30 year career in film and that and, and of course you just can leave the representatives behind you don't need it after you've kind of gotten yourself into the business so it just it's uh, it just kind of goes that way as long as you do good work you'll work all the time and it's like i said it's been a great ride Okay, well, um, I'd like to uh, jump in here just a little bit to uh, talk to the uh, the viewers. Uh, I may not have mentioned this. In fact, I don't think I did, but uh, we're going to reserve some time uh, near the end of this to answer any questions that you have. We won't probably won't be able to answer all of them, but somebody is going to be uh, keeping track in the chat area for questions, and we'll try and get to as many as we can when we start getting to the um, in the next, uh, say, 10 to 15 minutes, because uh, we've got an hour here and we definitely want to get back to uh, Trevor at the very end to give you guys a little bit of a lowdown on how to hold on, how to get a hold of the, the book that has all this that we're talking about, that we have all the artwork on, that we all have, you know, a lot of stuff going for it. I, um, I'm, I'm going to jump in also to say that uh, I got started in a weird way. I wanted to be a comic book artist, but I was on the West coast of the United States when the whole industry pretty much was on in New York. So uh, I sort of did a sideways thing into animation and I worked in uh, TV animation and uh, I was doing a lot of different jobs. Eventually I was doing storyboarding 
and um, somebody I knew from story from animation. Uh, I worked with them on a commercial job that got me my first agent. And that agent, you know, put me up for everything that I was qualified to do as a non-union uh, uh, artist. Eventually, I worked on a film that turned union, and that was Stargate. And I put in 30 days on that film, and I was actually 30 days and gone. I was on my next assignment. But that, that film turned union, and that made me union eligible. And so you guys out there, you actually have an easier time these days. Because the way it's structured now is that if uh, you have somebody wants uh, a director or, or a production wants to use you, even though you're not in the union, they're able to hire one non-union person to work on that film. And it could be you if you have your, you know, if you've gotten your work out there and people know who you are and uh, you get that 30 days and you are union eligible. And, there, and for those of you out there working on commercials, um, we have a section of the, uh, of the Illustrators Mad Artists at the uh, Art Directors Guild for commercial artists where your union hours working on union commercials can actually get you benefits and stuff. And eventually, if you, work, you put in enough hours, you'll become on the roster and available to work on film for uh, union signature studios. So that's another uh, great benefit right there. Um, and we also, uh, part of the art, uh, the uh, uh, illustrators and mad artists, we also have previs people. And previs maybe is a little bit more than we can go into right now, but that is um, a live, uh, 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 real time um, depiction of what you're supposed to see on screen. Uh, but they do it uh, digitally with 3D uh, models and a 3D environment. And sometimes they work from our storyboards to create those. Um, okay, well, uh, I left uh, the best for last. Uh, 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 Trevor, do you have a story yeah. that you got in? Yeah, I have a kind of uh, interesting story. Um, but uh, uh, it was a long road for me to go into film, right? Because I was. Um, in England, I grew up in England and I, but I loved American comic books. So I learned a lot of sequential things from reading, looking at Jim Colan, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko and Stranko. And like Tim, I asked what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a comic book artist. I didn't really translate that storytelling into storyboarding for film. But after working away in my 20s and not making any money, I kind of drifted into advertising and eventually running a studio in London uh, where we became the largest, um, had the best, some of the best artists in the business, including the late John Rockers, Matt Card and Derek Ogle. Uh, and Derek and Matt left for LA and um, I was still back in London and I decided to follow them to LA and work, work here. And initially it was just advertising. And I, I, I couldn't get into doing film. And uh, after 20 years of experience, I was told, no, you haven't done a film, we can't hire you because uh, you haven't any experience working in film. So uh, one day when my late wife, Joyce, was working, she was a masseuse and she was working on the actress, Lara Vinita Davidovich. And uh, the conversation came up that I'd been turned down for a film, can't remember what it was, but uh, she said to her, well, my boyfriend's looking for a storyboard artist. Uh, and uh, that boyfriend turned out to be Ron Shelton, who had directed Bull Durham, and he was looking to do a film on the Georgia Peach, Ty Cobb. So known a lot about baseball, as I grew up in England. Um, I somehow, I somehow got the job. And they were lucky enough to put me in the union. And my second film was Independence Day, and I didn't really look back after that. So... Um, I don't get married to a masseuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, keep things going a little bit. I'm I'm looking at the clock, but um, I would like to ask one question, and maybe just uh, you guys have a couple of things to say about it. And that is, currently, what is it like working as a storyboard artist in in film? I mean, we've we've talked about the beginnings, but let's talk about what's going on right now. 
Uh, Tracy, how about back to you? Um, it's, it's pretty busy at the moment in, in, in London, um, in England rather. It's, it's um, yeah, I mean, generally, well, everything's very different to how it was when I started because everything's digital now. Um, I think, if anything, I think this certainly is speed. We're expected to do things a lot quicker. I think we had more time, more prep time, maybe. Do you agree with that? Maybe years ago. And it's sort of that's something that certainly stands out as a big as a big change. But uh, yes. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you all agree. <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah, it's it's definitely um yeah, it's still a lot of fun. All right. Well, Warren, you got an answer for that? <laughs> um, you know what? <laughs> In this horrible last year and a half, where the world's been put sideways, after the first two months, I've worked all the way from spring of last year to now. Just steady work, Marvel job, and other feature work. And I've had to, the blessing is that I've turned down enough jobs that I've given jobs to friends of mine colleagues in the industry and during my, my hard times that I had I had people like you know Benton and, and Jim Delino and Darren Denlinger and Todd Harris find work for me so I've been able to give work back to other people so um, it's very busy now there, there's a lot of work going on there's always something whether it's uh, feature films or television uh, a lot of t TV jobs, and there's still commercial work. So business is booming now in this crazy world. So stay right, healthy. We're, we're, we're staying in front of a screen at one point or another, just uh, all the streaming stuff. They have to build content. They're not waiting for movies to give content. And streaming, not, streaming, yes. You know, and television and everything else. So um, uh, Mark? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, last year was was terrible. There was about an eight month period where the industry was pretty much shut down um, because of the pandemic. But you know, uh, during that time, I think it it uh, definitely accelerated Hollywood trends that had already been going on before the pandemic hit. Um, uh, I think prep times did. Tracy, you're right. Prep times have have gone down. Um, it wasn't unusual when I started 26 years ago to be on a project anywhere from six months to a year almost out. Um, uh, and now it's, it's, they have contracted that, uh, that uh, shortened that time. Um, but uh, I'm also going to say that there was a time when we thought that uh, storyboards were kind of had worn out their welcome. It seemed like Yes. The, the things were going digital yeah. and, and previs was was coming into being and, and in, in some cases encroaching. And so uh, a number of us were <laughs> were predicting doom for, you know, this kind of old school style of storyboarding. But what has happened is just the opposite has happened, actually, is that to me, it's gotten more, much more busy and productions are relying more heavily on storyboards than ever. Um, and it seems like previs has found its place in the process and storyboards as traditional as they are uh, have found their place and um uh, even though we've switched i mean i started drawing on paper and now i'm drawing you know i went from a cintiq i was one of the last to to convert to the technology but i went from a cintiq and now i'm drawing on an ipad pro um and so uh, you know, I, I, I've gone the full gamut as far as the technology goes. Um, and, and I think that with, with the trends that were happening, a lot of us are working remotely now, uh, you know, for every storyboard that they hire in a production before, they have to lease office space at the studios. That's very expensive to do that. And so they were already looking to have us work remotely before the pandemic hit. Now, it's easy, it's easy to have us work remotely. And they wanted to stream their own products. They wanted to own, they wanted to take that 30 or 40% that they were giving to all the, all the other entities uh, that, that the studios were giving to uh, in distribution. And now they've centralized that by bu buying streaming 
streaming services, streaming channels. They bought a lot of the cinema chains up. So this is a great time right now to get into the field of storyboards, into the field of entertainment and film. It's, it, I mean, we were predicting 10 years ago that this, we were gonna all be out of work. And we to were. me, things have just exploded. We yeah. were. Yeah. Uh, I just I'd love it if they can pay my uh, my electricity bill for all the air conditioning I have to have while I'm working. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's not it's not feasible to have it above 80 degrees in your house in Southern California while you're trying to work. You sweat all over your screen or whatever. You, you know, get sleepy. and you you short out your 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 stylus. Um, uh, Benton, you have anything to add to this? Because we're about to get to questions. Um, not, not too much more, more. I mean, really, uh, watching the Brady Bunch, uh, beginning every day, uh, when you're working is yeah. sort of, is, is sort of the, the main thing that's very different. Um, to be honest, I kind of miss the old days when you actually could sit down with the director and you could, you know, put your hands out in front and, and, or act it, act it out. And it's a little bit harder to do in two dimensions, but it does, but it does allow, um, it does allow you to sort of like, uh, uh, you know, they the, they can go off and go to Alaska or Cuba or wherever they're going. On yeah, a we're working uh, probably in con contact with you, which is which is a good thing. And I think um, working, you know, working remotely also allows you the latitude. If you're not the type, if you have a family, whatever it is, um, and you don't really want to, to travel, um, yeah, you know, if you need to do so, do so, uh, you don't necessarily have to. So. Um, you know, it seems like the, the industry is changing a lot in those ways and, and COVID just sort of uh, accelerated that whole process much quicker. Yeah, and Georgia's a nice place, but I don't think I would want to work over there for the, for the TV shows. I, I really enjoy doing my little Marvel jobs <laughs> from home. You know, but I do, what I do miss is lunch with you guys because yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when we were in the in the art department, it, it's such a it's what it's my favorite social type of thing. You know, it's like uh, Musso, Musso and Frank's Tim. I, I do. Lunch. That is another thing that I do think <laughs> kind of misses that you do miss sort of the bustle and and going on and the going on within the office mm. of of what's going on and you understand you know what's happening yep. holistically <laughs> in terms of the entire production, what's going on on stage or what's going on right how you work yeah right. you walk over to the art department you can get immediately you know, whatever exactly. not only what they worked on but their their uh, uh reference material their exactly reference material yeah. if they made a little model that you can kind of go in with your little you can take uh, shots of the model camera and, yeah. and get, yeah. in, get into there like that you know or even just go onto the set you know and, and kind of wander around the, the set and, and see what angles look like, what it feels like. Yeah, that's one of the, the down parts is that when you're not there in the production, you're not able to walk the set and look at the camp where the camera setups are gonna be. You're you're totally dependent on whoever's taking pictures of the location. You're not gonna, you know, when you're going on location with the director, I mean, it makes so much different. Everything is faster in the uh, for them because they have their setups this, the way they want them. And, and us as, as artists, we don't have to go through 20 questions or 50 questions to try and get there. We can be there and see it, you know, so. Yeah, that's the thing I miss the most is, is learning from the directors. Yeah, having that interaction, it's, it's invaluable, yeah. Perhaps uh, by next year, the world gets smarter, we'll have that back again, at least yeah. part of it. Not but for I me. I'm, I'm retired. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not so sure. You not so sure. Well, stop by. Stop by. All right, we only got a little bit of time left. Um, Ali, uh, do you have any questions uh, from the uh, from everybody? I do. We have some fun questions here. Um, speaking of directors, uh, Connie is wondering what is the relationship like between the storyboard artist, the cinematographer. And the director, she says, how much prep work is needed to agree on the types of shots that will be used? All right, um, you were actually beginning to go so there a little bit, Trevor. Why don't you uh, answer? Well, that? I, I, I have this story that um, the only time I worked for Steven Spielberg was on a movie called Robo Apocalypse, 
and um, yep, I was like, yeah, I was never got made, unfortunately. But um, most of the time, I was working with Guy Dias, the production designer. But the one time I got to sit down with Spielberg, he was, I placed my computer in front of him and he was clicking through the frames as he does, looking at it like a, you know, a movie. And this was about nearly a 200 frame sequence. And uh, he was nodding and I think, well, maybe he likes it, you know. And then it came to one point where I had this guy throw a grenade into a doorway to blow it up uh, to get in to get to the robots. And the robots were taller than the doorway. So he says, well, throw the grenade over the wall, blow up the robot, and have the robot fall through the wall. So that's a much better way of doing it, and that's why he's a director. And that's the thing you learn on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, I have a little experience uh, with different kinds of directors, and that's something, when you answer, how is it working with the director, I'm going to say, um, well, is, is this a guy that came out of cinematography? Is this guy coming out of acting? Is this guy uh, basically a writer? Because all of those will depend. And generally, the, the cinematographers, they know their stuff, and they'll tell you exactly how they want to do it. You get a guy that's a writer, he's coming from the internal monologue type of thing, and you have to help him with the, the writing part of it. Sure. You know, So uh, that kind of stuff is very dependent on the director. So when they ask me, how do I want to work with the director? I'm saying, I'm here to make you know, your film, however you want to work with it. And I just suggest that there's a, a, an easy way of doing it. We, we start at the beginning. Uh, you know, I, you and I can come up with a shot list and a thumb and some thumbnails. We agree. And if we can make changes there and then uh, we can go a hot, go ahead and do, you know, a, a, a full thing, you know, to this, because sometimes they don't want to have really tight boards. Sometimes uh, just really quick sketch stuff that just shows movement is all they want. So this is the type of thing you have to find, you know, from the director. And sometimes they can tell by your artwork, by what you present, you know, if they're going to get what they want from you. Uh, Allie? Yeah, so another fun one. Um, what was your favorite thing to work on and why? Maybe we can touch on each person really quickly. Okay, that's a fast one. Uh, Mark, why don't you go ahead and take that? Oh boy, uh, probably the funnest one I've worked on was Oz the Great and Powerful um, was Sam Raimi. I, I just, he, he relied uh, exclusively on storyboards and we were in Michigan for seven months uh, on location filming and they kept, they kept me and uh, Dave Lowry uh, on during the shooting process and just going down to set every day, uh, getting time with Stam. Uh, it, it was a real treat. We would always put on our sport coat and tie to go down uh, to see Sam on set because that was, a, well, it did two things. It, it, uh, it made us stand out because we were the only people on set with a, with a coat and tie, again, which Sam always wore a coat and tie in honor of Alfred Hitchcock. Um, so, but we were noticed on set and so Sam would always make sure that he would give us time if he saw us standing amongst all the people uh, behind the camera there. So uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, the days were long. Sometimes we would work till 2 a.m. Uh, just to try and get some time with Sam. So uh, it was, it, it, but overall it was just, it, it, it was a thrill to, to be out there and, and, and work that closely with the director. Okay, um, uh, Benton? Um, I'd say there's, I don't know, I can't think of one, but I, I, I would say two films that I worked on that I was, that, uh, that I really enjoyed the most. Um, one of them was never actually made. It was called The Banshee and Ben McGee. Terrible. And it was, uh, it was going to be the first live action film by Dean DeBlaw before he made, uh, before he made How to Train Your Dragon. And working with Dean was a pleasure. He was always open to ideas and he, he was an artist himself so he understood what we did and I uh, was working on that one for almost a year and uh, it was it was it was, a, it was a, one of the best uh, you know family scripts that I'd ever read and unfortunately it never got made but I guess the one that I, I'm most uh, known for is uh, working on the Phantom Menace and for me partic particularly the sequence where with uh, 
the Jedi fight with Darth Maul. Um, I was sort of their de facto uh, uh, martial arts oh, movie yeah. expert on that. So a lot of the reference that, that we use to, to, uh, to reference that film was from my personal collection. And uh, they basically, and George basically allowed me to, to basically kind of do what I wanted. Um, and so, um, so it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. He wanted a more of a, of a Hong Kong style uh, martial arts fight and, and uh, less of a, less of a stoic kind of Japanese style, but more of a, more, ener more of an energetic, you know, jumping around kind of really crazy bravura type of st style. And that was a lot of fun to do. And, be, you know, what made it, you know, how, how, how fun can that be is, is looking like a, a lot of old Kung Fu movies and things like that uh, all day to, to, to inspire you and, and then try and um, play those out on, on your favorite uh, Star Wars characters. I mean, it was a lot of fun. All right, well, uh, Warren, how about you? Easy tie, um, the first one being Too Fast, Too Furious, because I got to work in, in uh, South Beach, Florida, uh, with one of my best friends, John Singleton, and um, and the great Terry Leonard, the stunt coordinator, who was a very close oh, friend of mine, as well as um, a former Padawan uh, named Brian McGee. So that was a great time. Just a great, and Paul Walker was just the nicest person. Um, great guy. The other favorite movie was was the movie uh, Defenses as it was the second time that I got to work with Denzel Washington as his board artist. I was originally going to be on for only two weeks, but then it ended up being like 11 weeks in Pittsburgh, working with him such, uh, such side by side, uh, private meetings with, with D and just a great time. And, um, and it also helped that there was amazing four story comic book DVD movie store five blocks from where we were staying so I, I was in paradise so definitely those two movies uh tracy you have a favorite um i've got a couple actually i think um u571 i really enjoyed years ago because uh, i love drawing world war ii stuff and and uh, i had to go to like a few lessons with the actors about the yeah, the submarines and and um I yeah, just had a great time. We were in Rome and Malta, and I was between the visual effects and main unit. I was the only board artist out there at the time, and and it was great. I was on that for nearly ten months, and uh, I'd say the other one I had fun um, doing solo. Um, the uh, we were working a lot on animatics. There were four of us actually, which was slightly unusual because we were doing that, and we were working a lot with the the editors, and we were just every day. Um, kind of going in and sort of bashing out ideas for the, the train sequence and. Yeah, it was, that was a lot of fun, actually. Um, we were all put in different departments. I was in visual effects with another artist, and then there was another one in second unit, and we'd all get together in the edit, in the edit room. And um, So, yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're the two that come to mind, anyway. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I think my bucket list one was Lost World, because uh, I thought I would never get to work on a Jurassic Park film. And so it, when that happened, that was amazing. The actual uh, working was actually, uh, uh, the commute sucked. Um, I had a lot more fun working on really terrible films like <laughs> Son of the Mask and I got to go to Australia for that, you know? Um, and some of them were kind of like good places and iffy things, but uh, Benton and I worked on uh, the, uh, the Incredible Hulk in Toronto and that turned out to be like a, eye-opening thing I, I thought I would never want to go to Toronto and now I think it's my favorite city in in Canada so uh uh okay uh I'm, I'm not sure we're going to have enough time for let's try one more Allie okay um real quick uh where can people find your book that's what I was going to tell <laughs> Trevor to do and look at this we got, we got a nice five minutes for it Trevor why don't you tell them where to do it it's here this is a printed out copy, but at the moment it's on a slow boat from China. So we will see it probably end of October, I hope. Um, but they can pre-order it from Hermes Press, who's the publisher. 
uh, and they can also order it from Stuart Ng, which is NG, Stuart NG Books. And he has a special deal that uh, you get a signed copy and uh, a free original storage board from me. Um, and I'll be going down to his, um, he has a bookstore in Torrance and uh, we're hoping to do a signing as soon as possible and get as many artists um, who are in the book down there. And, um, and um, ask a team to put the, is there, I'm, I'm actually I'm writing in the chat, is there, is there a, a website for them? Hermes Press, yes. Yes, just go to Hermes Press and you can go to their website. All right, I'll just put Hermes Press up there and- It uh, comes to their website and you can, you can pre-order it from there and they'll yes. ship it anywhere. I'm mean, sure it's gonna, I am gonna start going to the bookstores, you know, all around like LA and they'll be, you know, hopefully available there. Great. Um, yeah, we're all looking forward to it. And uh, I'm sure once uh, once it's, well, you can get your pre-order in yeah, now. Can, yeah, I mean, it will be able to, uh, before the end of the year. I think. Obviously we'll be doing some as many signings and next year we hope, you know, we'll, we will be at San Diego Comic Con and we'll have a, not just the hardback edition, but a softback edition as well. And there's also a, a, a slipcase edition if you want to spend some more money. <laughs> uh okay everybody um i'd like to you guys have any final words you want to uh, start maybe uh uh tracy um i'd love for more women to to join to <laughs> storyboard artists <laughs> so uh yeah sign up it's it's great fun and and um yeah why not <laughs> join the storyboard artists see the world yeah, exactly. Okay. I've actually, yeah, just briefly, I've actually mentored a number of people. Um, some of them have gotten in, in the union, and I would like to see more female members, please, and also um, um, artists of color. I always look out for because everyone doesn't have the same options or how to get to know people. So um, you got to just find ways to connect with people. People can find me on Instagram if they want to contact me. And I, I assume the, plus also the, the other artists here, they also have really great um, sites on Instagram. Okay, uh, uh, Mark. Uh, well, first, I just want to thank Trevor and again, congratulate him. Uh, it's been the greatest honor of my life to be associated with uh, my fellow artists on this screen. They are truly some of the finest artists in the world. And uh, the people you work with overall in the industry, uh, uh, my union brothers and sisters and, and the staff there, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without, without them, without their backing and all their hard work. And just uh, the, the film industry in general working with the directors and the producers, the cinematographers, the production designers, uh, even the PAs, I, 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 it's just been so rewarding. And uh, just, I know uh, every day I, uh, <laughs> I, I feel very fortunate to be associated uh, with all of them, especially the people on this screen. Uh, uh, I just, I think they're magnificent illustrators and artists and I'm humbled. Right back at you. All right, Ben, do you want to have a word? I just want to say that, uh, uh, you know, this is this is an art that combines two of my great loves, drawing and 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 films. And I think there's so many people who uh, have an interest in those those two things that um, this is a great profession where you can learn how to uh, where where you can learn how to do that and and you know affect the movie industry uh, um, and. Um, I'm so looking forward to seeing Trevor's book that that kind of encapsulates uh, a lot of the talent that uh, that have uh, passed through the years uh, that don't don't necessarily get recognized. And um, so I'm looking forward to uh, the celebration of those those things, art and film that 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 Trevor's book is 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 going to be celebrating um, 
that of this art that we uh, we all love and not many people know about. Okay, um, Trevor. Well, thanks for doing this, uh, everybody. Um, thank Lightbox and thank the Art Directors Guild. Um, I think when the book comes out, it will give a lot of people a good insight into the industry and the way story by artists work. Um, and hopefully there'll be more people of all color. Yes. Yeah, it's a different perspectives being different visions. Yes, yeah. yes. It's strange, I, I, I don't, I mean, it's weird that the first member of our union was a woman, Dorothea. Yeah, I'd love to have met her. I wish I, yeah, I, wish I, 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 I did. I did Very meet general. her very briefly. Yeah. A, there was a there was a party for the union at the, in Santa Monica, and I didn't meet her very briefly. She was in her nineties, and then I think she lived over. I mean, it, it's it's oh, it's good yeah. for a lifespan because you know Tyrus Wong was one hundred and two, and he's he's got three films. He's got three storyboards in the book. So, uh, but. Um, no, I think I, 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 that's my main goal with the book was to really show people what we do um, because of people really don't understand. Uh, and uh, hope this gives a good insight. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who uh, joined us. And I hope that next year we'll actually get to do this in person. Yeah. And that you'll be able, to, you'll be able to talk to us afterwards. And um, uh, looking forward to maybe seeing you guys if you uh, have uh, in, uh, any intention or inkling to uh, come and join us uh, and, uh, and join the profession. So I'd yeah. like to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Yeah, Tim, Thanks. And, and everyone, there's for you, if you're interested, we have a portfolio review for by our director, uh, Gil members, professional uh, storyboard artists and illustrators and um, and so we have, as a part of Lightbox, it starts like right now. So if you go over to our, uh, or register to, for the portfolio review, you can get a lot of the things that were mentioned, like uh, Bitten said he got his first job by having a portfolio review done. Uh, and it, it, his, his work was passed along. So here's that opportunity. And so we have a hard out that we have to get out of here to get that started. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Fun. Closing question. Uh, there's some que there's some questions in the chat here. Will that be left up so we can go through and answer uh, some of the questions that uh, some of the viewers have been watching? I've been trying to well, save chat. I don't know how that works with the, on well, the other well, way. The, the, the chat the questions are archived, um, and they will be okay. part of the the the, uh, the recording. And so we can get out, uh, we can get that taken care of. So thank you for bringing that up, Mark. And however, we do have to leave out of here in order to get the portfolio review started um, right now. Thanks, Ryan. So Ron, are you are you the one that's going to hit the recording button? Um, uh, we're exiting right out of here, myself and uh, and, and Alex. <laughs>